Hi friends, welcome to another week of fascinating AI news that caught my eye. Let's start with two papers. You might remember this paper from a few months ago showing 25 autonomous agents simulate human behavior in a Westworld-like sandbox environment. I actually made a video earlier going through this paper if you're interested. The exciting update is that the author has now open sourced the code. This repo lists several steps you can follow and there are some additional steps I had to do to make this work. I will show it here. So if you want to follow along, you can follow the steps. Keep in mind that this is very costly. I only ran a few steps and it costed me about 10 bucks. So keep that in mind when you're running it. Nevertheless, this is an amazing example for prompt engineering or learning about prompt engineering. You can clearly see all the prompts in the Python console. Here is an example for generating a hourly schedule for a character. The prompt starts with the schedule format, then describes a character's persona, traits, ongoing activities, lifestyle, daily plan, previous generated activities, and intended schedule today. The language model can then generate what the character will be doing in the next hour. There is a lot of complexity in this project with various prompts and logics. Check out the prompt template folder and the rongptprompt.py file to learn more about the prompts. The second paper found that language models, especially larger and instruction fine-tuned models, tend to echo or agree with the user's opinion, even if it happens to be incorrect. To address this issue, the researchers experimented with synthetic data interventions that encouraged the models to be more robust to user opinions. You can check on this repo on how to generate the synthetic fine-tuning data. Now, let's move on to some exciting industry news from the past week. NVIDIA has been making waves lately. Jensen made several announcements at the SIGGRAPH conference. The next-gen GH200 Grace Hopper superchip is able to connect multiple GPUs and CPUs for exceptional performance and scalability, and deliver more memory and bandwidth than the current generation. So why is this a big deal? Traditionally for GPUs, there is high latency to move data from CPU memory to GPU memory, and the GPU memories are quite limited. With the superchips, it is exceptionally fast to move data around, and you can have enough memory or connect with more superchips for more memory and compute power. The NVIDIA AI Workbench allows users to develop and fine-tune AI models on a PC or workstation in a secure environment, and then scale up as needed. NVIDIA is also partnering with Hugging Face, allowing Hugging Face users access NVIDIA DGX cloud AI supercomputing to develop advanced AI models. Google introduced Project IDX, a browser-based development experience powered by AI. You can develop from anywhere on any device and publish your app on Firebase hosting. This is not available to try out yet, but you can join the waitlist here. Stable Diffusion released Stable Coding for AI-generated coding a Japanese language model, and Stable Chat, a new chat interface. And finally, there has been some concerns about Zoom's data usage and data privacy. There was a tweet about this earlier this week, went viral, but it got deleted somehow. Zoom then updated the terms of service and clarified, for AI, we do not use audio, video, or chat content for training our models without customer consent. And it looks like they have updated their terms of service again yesterday, basically saying that they do not use customer content for training AI models. But still, I wonder if they will use customer data for other purposes and how many other companies are using our data without us knowing. More importantly, why don't we have a data privacy law like GDPR? This is kind of concerning. Anyways, that's it for this week. Let me know if I missed anything. See you next time. Bye.